Welcome to Goo Gaming, a weekly catch up keeping you up to date on the latest video game releases, sales, information, ridiculous stories, and everything in between. Thank you for joining me. My name is It's Gooky, and let's get started. It is the beginning of the month, so we can expect all sorts of free releases on the lineup for July 2022. Starting off with the PlayStation Plus free lineup, we get three games this month, including Crash Bandicoot 4, It's About Time, The Dark Pictures, Man of Medan, and lastly, the Arcade Geddon. Ar Arcaded and Ar that one. This trio of new free PlayStation Plus games will be available starting July 5th for PlayStation 4 and 5 users. Amazon has done a phenomenal job of compiling a long list of free games for its Prime users, most of which I've never even heard of before, but you will find some gems on the list. All of these games are available now, but check back on July 12th and 13th for Prime Day. Here's a list of the free Epic games this week, which are available until July 7th, 2022. And last but not least, Xbox Games with Gold, Beasts of Maravilla Island, Relict the Thrillville Off the Rails and Torchlight. All right, now let's talk about some sales. Steam Summer Sale is live now and ends July 7th, so be sure to check out the large library of game sales there. Also, a big old super sale for Nintendo. It's actually really rare for Nintendo exclusives to go on sale, so check that out now live till July 6, 2022. Taking a look at this week's most notable gaming stories, we got the Nintendo Direct Mini. Not a full-fledged Nintendo Direct, but we did get announcements like Monster Hunter Rise Sun break Mario and Rabbit's gameplay release trailer and release date, which is going to be October 20th. Persona 5R, Persona 4 Golden, and Persona 3 are all coming to the Switch. Portal the Companion Collection is out now on Switch, and Nier Automa Autom Automata, however you say it, hits the Switch on October 6th. I listed a link to the entire... Why is it hard to say? I linked the entire Nintendo Direct down below if you guys want to check it out. On other Nintendo news, or shall I say rumor-esque things? According to Jeff Grubb, Nintendo's going to release Metroid Prime sometime this holiday season, the remastered version of it's it. It's not official news, but it is Jeff Grubb, so take that as you will. Valve's Steam Deck is making a big splash in the gaming community. This small package holds incredible processing power and software availability, bringing most of your favorite PC games right to your fingertips. Backorders for this hardware have been through the roof. But thankfully, in recent times, Valve has more than doubled their shipment. So if you were one of the many people on the waiting list for this gem, hopefully your wait will be cut short. The latest news stories on games that we have been anxiously waiting for will be covered a little bit later in the video, but right now we're moving on to ridiculous gaming stories. EA got roasted. EA made a whoopsie f***sy when they tried to hop on on the latest trend for Twitter. You know, the one where they say, there are 10, but insert negative personality trait here. Their tweets stated, when there are 10, but they only like playing single player games. <laughs> Here are some of the 14,000 tweets in response to this foolishness. Understandable, you're unfamiliar with the concept of 10s and a bunch of ratings. <laughs> I've been having a good time with this one. Oh, here's a good one. There is no forgiveness and it's a graveyard with all of the games that they've killed. <laughs> Four hours later, they tweeted, Roast well deserved. We'll take this L because playing single player games actually makes them an 11. Good job. <laughs> Sonic Origin. <laughs> Sorry, can't get over the EA. Sonic's Origins collections kind of bombed. Low ratings indicated the dissatisfaction with the audiences and the players, but also there was dissatisfaction with the game's developers themselves. The development team headcanon were behind some of the games within the collection, and they were also very unhappy to see the release state of the game, which included bugs, glitches, just an unfinished release state like we're kind of used to seeing nowadays. Simon Tomley, which is HC Stealth on Twitter, tweeted, This is frustrating. I won't lie and say that there weren't some issues with what we gave to Sega, but what is in Origins is also not what we turned in. Integration introduced some wild bugs that conventional logic would have one believe were our responsibility. A lot of them aren't. Who's to blame? Who cares? Game was unfinished. Give people their money back. WWE superstar John Cena was apparently the only reason we got a new Metroid 2D series. Okay, that's probably not true. Apparently he's a big fan of the series and he was raving about it, wanting another game uh, within the same category and genre. And when the new 2D Metroid installment came out, he was like, he loved the game. So that was nice. <laughs> Why did we get pictures of an empty room and a floating Metroid statue? That's weird. Here's some news on gaming things that we've been waiting to hear about. According to PlayStation's developer Sucker Punch, there is no games within the Sly Cooper franchise and the infamous franchise in development right now. Why? 
From Software tweeted out hiring for future game titles, and Miyazaka himself confirmed that From Software's newest installment is in the latest stages of development, the final stages of development. Hogwarts Legacy keeps dropping teaser trailers on its Twitter, giving us glimpses of the game and maybe hints to new locations. I did a video on everything you need to know about that game, so check that out if you're interested. I think you can click somewhere up here, or maybe up there, I don't know, look for Lost it. Lost Ark is collaborating with Witcher 3, introducing some of the characters under a new Class. More to come on that because we don't have that many details and it's not going to release here in the United States just yet. Skull and Bones receives an ESRB rating, which means we are one step closer to a release date for the game. They also released an official description, which reads, a naval combat action game in which players assume the role of a shipwrecked outcast on the journey to become a pirate captain. As players take on missions, they can explore settlements and engage in dramatic sea battles. From a first person perspective, players command their crew to shoot cannons at rivals and attempt to obtain loot and goods. Did we pull the description off of Sea of Thieves on accident? I like to pretend like I have a team, it's all me. We finally got some insight on a highly anticipated game, Return to Monkey Island. Former Lucas Games designer gave a quote, The thing that amazed me the most, I experienced in the first 10 minutes of the game and I can't talk about it because Ron and Dave managed to do something that I would have thought was impossible in terms of storytelling and they pull it off, I think, admirably. It'll be worth the wait even people are raving about the parts they don't like because this will certainly excite. There's plenty in there to Discuss for future years to come. That's a pretty incredible description given he's only talking about the first 10 minutes of the game. No news yet on solid release dates for highly anticipated games like God of War Ragnarok, uh, GTA 6, or Hogwarts Legacy. I know it can be frustrating to get little to no news on games that we're really excited to see, but I would like to offer a friendly reminder that this is no reason to be toxic, nasty, or straight up inhumane to the development teams behind these games. It's a bit ridiculous that we as a community have to be reminded of things like this. But with news like Monkey Island's creator Rob Gilbert no longer talking about his future release due to online abuse or hearing that people are sending unsolicited private part pictures to the development team behind God of War Ragnarok, it just puts a bad taste in my mouth. It's disgusting that people can actually act this way. We as gamers receive enough criticism from people outside of our community to be acting this way towards fellow members of the community in which we should be thriving in. Let's always advocate for positivity as we share our passions with the world. That's it for me today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, liking, commenting, and subscribing helps me out a ton, but you already knew that you've been on YouTube before. That's a wrap on the very first installment of Goo Gaming. Super excited to get this series off the ground. If you guys don't already follow me on my Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, and or Twitch, what are you doing with your lives? I am live on Twitch Monday through Friday at 1 p.m. PST, 4 p.m. EST. If you like the content that you see here, you'll definitely like the content that you see over there. With the thank yous and the gratitudes out of the way and with the marketing out of the way, I hope you guys are having a wonderful night, day, afternoon, whatever time it is in your time zone, and I hope to see you guys in the next YouTube video. Bye.